Hi everyone, welcome to the show. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a question we get asked all the time. What do you do with Zoe, the little one, while you're homeschooling Alexi? Um, we get asked this question because honestly, people just feel a little overwhelmed, I think, of what to do with a toddler or a baby while you have another child who's trying to do something like uh, seated, like, what, like some book work or working on a project. So how do you handle a child who needs all of your attention and is you know busy and wants to go while having a child who's trying to do something that needs to be seated and maybe a little bit calmer. So here are three things that we do that make homeschooling a little bit easier when you have a little one. The first thing that you wanna do is you wanna consider timing. Timing is key. It is crucial that you pick the right time to do your homeschooling. Um, and when I refer to homeschooling, I'm talking about seated work. So I like to make sure that we keep our locks very short, especially if you know Alexi's little to begin with. But if I know I have Zoe and Zoe is gonna have to be there with us, keeping the blocks short, as short as possible, is key. Um, the other thing that we like to do is make sure that when we sit down, that we pick a time that everyone has been fed, everyone is, you know, uh, changed, everyone is happy in a good headspace, and that we're not trying to do um, seated work while people are tired or cranky. So like after lunch, not seated work time. So by considering when we're gonna do our homeschooling and keeping it short, it actually alleviates a lot of our problems later on. So like I said, we make sure that everyone is fed, well rested and changed when we sit down to do any of our seated work that we do with Lexi. The second thing that we do that makes homeschooling a lot easier with a little one is we involve Zoe in almost everything we do. So whether we're reading books, uh, baking, playing outside, doing any hands-on activities, Zoe is right there with us. Whether she is grasping the academic concept that we're talking about or understanding what's going on, that's not important. She just gets to be there and enjoys the activity that we're, we're doing. Um, for example, this past weekend, we went and we did a letter scavenger hunt. Zoe is not even two. She doesn't know her letters. She's not out there identifying letters, but she was really happy to go and find that letter B just because that's what Alexi was doing. So she was just happy to be out there enjoying the outdoors, doing kind of a similar activity. And she was totally entertained the whole time we were doing this hands-on activity. So we try to do a lot of that. Just have her around, have her with us and she just loves it. She loves sitting down. She loves sitting down to read books. And so even though she may not understand like the concepts and the themes and the plots of the stories that we're reading, she's just enjoying the story and she's picking up the vocabulary and all those words and phrases at the same time. So just involve them, have them sit there with you when you're doing other activities. And then when you go to do seat work that maybe they can't participate in, it's not such a big deal because they've already done other activities. The third thing and final thing that we do to make life a little bit easier when we're homeschooling with a little one is we have some simple activities that we like to pull out for Zoe. So when Alexi sits down to do her little math worksheet or her letter writing, we like to have activities that Zoe can do in her high chair. So I will pull out things like Play-Doh. I will pull out uh, coloring, stickers, Zoe loves stickers. Her little, she has these little characters that she likes to play with, something like that. And I will pop her into her high chair and let her play with those while Alexi is doing her, her activity. Because we keep our blocks so short, the 10 or 15 minutes that Zoe's sitting there playing with her Play-Doh or her characters or whatever she's doing is you know, entertaining enough for that long that Alexi can get her work done and then Zoe is doing something that she loves too. So it's kind of a, you know, it's a handoff. Um, another activity that we love to do is Zoe has a notebook. Just like Alexi does her, she has a little journal where Alexi likes to write. Um, Zoe has one too. Because monkey see, monkey do, right? So Zoe wants to be like Alexi and so she has a little journal. So one of her activities that she does probably once a week is I pull out her journal, put it down in front of her and give her some crayons or markers and she'll happily color and, and scribble in her book. And that's great because that's starting fine motor skills, that's starting um, literacy and writing. 
but she just thinks she's being like Lexi and it entertains her for that 10 or 15 minutes while Lexi is working on her letter V. So to recap, we want to consider the timing, make sure the timing is good. We want to make sure that we include them as, in as many activities as possible throughout the day so that they're not feeling left out when it comes time to sit down to do the work. And then when we like to have activities that are just for them so that they have something to do that makes them feel like they're having fun and learning at the same time as their older sibling. Homeschooling with a little one is tricky, but it is totally possible. So if you guys have any comments, questions, if you love this video, leave us a message below and we will totally get back to you. Like I said, this video was inspired by a question when you guys asked and we're totally happy to answer them. So until next time, see you later. Bye. <laughs> if you like what you saw, please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to get notifications when we upload our latest videos. Give us a thumbs up and don't forget to leave us a comment. We'll see you next week for more activities, adventures, and lifelong learning. Bye!